Buying your first telescope is hard. It can be very overwhelming having to come to the conclusion as to which telescope best fits your needs. And that's simply down to the fact that different telescopes do different things. But none of this is helped by the fact that when we seek guidance as to which telescope we should buy, the first and supposedly most trustworthy link picks a two and a half thousand dollar smart telescope as the best overall choice. I really wish I was kidding. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing two entry-level telescopes. One is fairly well established as a budget-friendly choice, regularly being available here in the UK for just £279, whilst the other is a supposedly unreleased scope from one of the biggest telescope companies in the world. This telescope is yet to be confirmed by Celestron and it's a very bizarre circumstance that I've managed to get my hands on one, but I'm very interested to see what it can capture. The significance of this video will be that these are two relatively affordable beginner telescopes that are capable of taking images such as this. The question is, should one of these be the telescope that you buy? Let's find out. I'm Damon Scotting and this is Astronomical. This is the SV Bonnie 503 70mm Refractor Telescope. As a company, I've always felt that SV Bonnie have thrived at filling the niches of the astronomy accessory market by providing a vast selection of products at affordable prices. Because let's face it, we astro enthusiasts get taken for a ride when it comes to buying new gear. But SV Bonnie cover practically all the bases in astrophotography. They have a good selection of cameras and telescopes as well as one of the most comprehensive accessory product lines of any company in the world. And better yet, their models are pretty much always the cheapest. But surely that means they can't be the best as well. Right? I was originally planning on pitting it against the Ascar 71F, but this plan was quickly changed after I realised the Ascar 71F was blowing the SV Bonnie out of the water. And with good reason. It may have been the same size, but the Ascar is twice the price, currently retailing at $599. You can find the link to that video in the description below. I originally wanted to make a budget setup using a £300 mount, a £350 camera, and a £300 telescope, which is what led me down the route of purchasing an SV Bonnie 70mm, a Skywatcher Star Adventure. 2i and an SV Bonnie 705C camera. Now you can argue that the mount is just shy of being a worthy mount since it's not a go-to tracking mount but I've found that it's still more than possible to get some round stars when taking 60 second long exposures. Exhibit A. The Dumbbell Nebula. The telescope and camera have each done a surprisingly good job imaging this planetary nebula. This is a raw stacked image of 68 times 1 minute long exposures. Next up is the Veil Nebula, which also puts some lovely colours on display. You've probably already noticed how many of these stars have thick blue magenta-ish rings on the outside of them. This is due to chromatic aberration, and it's a running theme throughout the images captured with this telescope. And although I find it to be a fairly big issue, it's something that can be simply resolved in post-processing. Now this is 62 minutes worth of one minute long exposures of the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules. All of these images are raw stacked images, and that part is emphasised by the fact that I haven't done anything about the bloody satellite trails throughout the images. They really are becoming an ever increasing nuisance when taking long exposure images. When stargazing in real time, however, I'm finding that they're becoming a second-rate meteor shower, which is actually quite enjoyable. It's actually kind of nice to then be able to pull out your phone and look up exactly what satellite it was that just passed by. I do find that part really interesting. So when it comes to live view observing, it's quite fun, but long exposures, they're a nightmare. Then lastly, for the SV Bonnie 70mm, I imaged our nearest galactic neighbour, the Andromeda Galaxy. Plenty of detail to be made out from the galactic disk, which is nice, although I can't help but feel the size of the stars in all of these images is too much. So using deconvolution tools really goes a long way to making your images look much sharper and more professional. This process is of course largely aided by the quality of the data you have captured. And for a telescope under £300, I think I've managed to get some really nice shots here. Here's a full review of the specifications of the SV Bonnie scope. In terms of editing the colours of these images, that's very much down to your own personal preferences. The editing process more than often takes longer than the actual imaging process, which is mind- So now that we've learned what the SV Bonnie 70mm is capable of, it's time to find out what the ever so slightly smaller Celestron 63ED is capable of. Now the fact is, this scope is 10% smaller in aperture size, which means its light gathering capabilities are going to be reduced compared to the SV Bonnie 70mm. Nevertheless, here's what I managed to capture when I pointed it towards the Pleiades for an hour. As you can see, we have some dust and cloud structure visible in our image, which is very exciting. This is precisely the level of detail we should be hoping for when using a telescope to image the night sky. This right here should be the benchmark. There are some much nicer blue colours visible in the image and compared to the SV Bonnie 70mm, zero chromatic aberration. 
The main difference between this camera and the SV Bonnie 705C is that the pixel size of the ASI 183 is smaller than that of the SV Bonnie, but the resolution is significantly higher, which sounds like a worthy payoff, except for the fact that the ASI 183 suffers heavily from amp glow, but this can be mostly reduced through the use of dark frames. Then for a comparison image, I pointed the scope back towards the Andromeda Galaxy and tried to bring out as much as I could in our galactic companion. Sadly though, this scope has struggled in comparison to the SV Bonnie 70mm. They each have roughly the same level of exposure, but I think the key difference here is likely a result of the smaller aperture in the telescope. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two images captured by each scope. Once again, you can play around with it to make these images look more presentable, but it obviously makes more sense that I show you the raw stuff when comparing the two scopes, otherwise I'd also be comparing my editing skills. As it currently stands, the Celestron 63 ED is a myth. There is no official statement about the existence of Celestron releasing a new refractor range of telescopes. With that being said, the marketing images that accompany this scope on AliExpress do look particularly official. Regardless, I decided to take as small of a risk as I could afford and purchase the smallest refractor in their range. So the images are here for you to come to your own conclusions on which scope you think was better. I do think the Celestron 63 ED manages the colors a lot better than the SV Bonnie, but with that being said, the SV Bonnie just pips the Celestron in terms of detail of its images. So I'd say if possible, lean towards one of the larger scopes in the Celestron range, perhaps the Celestron 82 ED. This will cost you 450 pounds, and that's before you account for import taxes and shipping. I have no news on what the official prices will be when these scopes eventually hit the market, but the current prices seem more than fair. My opinion would be that if you are looking for a refractor telescope to buy in order to take images of the night sky and you have less than 300 pounds, go for the SV Bonnie, at least until the Celestron telescopes safely hit the market. This is due to import taxes as I had to pay an extra 76 pounds on top of what I paid on AliExpress for the Celestron 63 ED, which pushes it over the price limit. They're both more than capable telescopes that are far closer to the budgets of a beginner astrophotographer than Space.com's number one ranked overall recommended telescope, the $2,500 Unistellar. For the record, you can get the Celestron 6SE for just over a third of the price of the Unistellar. I think most amateur astrophotographers will agree that this is a far more suitable scope for beginner astronomers. It is available for $899 and of course includes a go-to tracking system. And whilst we're on the topic of stretching our budget, if the telescope shown today didn't quite tickle your pickle, then I would also strongly recommend checking out the ASCAR 71F. For warning, that telescope is $599. I've included links to all of the products featured in today's video in the description below. Full disclosure, most of them are affiliate links that mean I will get a small kickback on any sales, but that has in no way influenced my opinions on any of these products. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.